Okay, howdy, got a new mic holder, howdy. I've tried to make this video like three times and I can't quite convey the point that I'm trying to get at. So we're gonna try a fourth and at the end, you tell me if you get what I mean here. Also, this is all the stuff from the meat rocket. We're gonna get rid of most of it. I am gonna keep the stuff on the left here though. My friends wrote these and I think they're funny. And since meat rocket is over, we get to reset the we're so back and it's so over counter. And you know what? I think I'm allowed a little freebie. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I'm gonna try to explain this using an example. I am a professional artist. This is a UAV. Your challenge is to build this. However, there are requirements. The UAV needs to fly 10 kilometers. It needs to carry 10 pounds. It needs to be able to take pictures and or videos. It needs to be able to hover and it needs to be able to operate in GNSS denied territory, otherwise known as GPS denied territory. I guarantee you there are thousands of people working on this exact set of requirements right now. But for our purposes, this is just an example. I wanna congratulate you because you are now an employee at Bolock Mark Grummel 3 Harris. It's a big new company and it is the only company in the defense space that will exist after 10 years because AI is taking everything else and all these things do is just eat each other. Scenario one, you are the optics engineer. Okay, this is, this is you right here. I gave you a really cool baseball hat. This is a camera with a little flash. This is a video camera. Your job as the optics engineer is to make sure that all the optical things on this UAV work and they have to fit within the requirements. So can this thing take pictures? Can it take videos? Can it do that at 10 kilometers? Can it do that while it's hovering? Can it do that while it's in GNSS denied territory? Can it do it without, you know, I don't know, failing? Can it focus? Are you working at multiple focal lengths? Are you doing visible? Are you doing infrared? As the optics engineer, these are the things that you are focused on. So now I wanna talk about what we call the great filter. The great filter is this idea, usually when we talk about aliens, that every civilization has to pass some test and that test is the barrier between them going out among the stars and like spreading out or just dying off. And so when we think of great filters for humanity, we think of things like uh, surviving a nuclear age, surviving a mass pandemic, surviving AI, these kind of big things that we think, oh, there's some potential, even if it's an outside chance that it could destroy everything and everyone. I like to think of great filters at a smaller scale. So for a project, what is the most likely bad outcome for the project? What's the thing that we are trying to optimize against happening? So for our optics engineer at the Balakmark Grummel 3 Harris Corporation, Incorporated, LLC, Incorporated, I would argue it's not that they have to make the best optics chain. If they're an optics engineer at this company, they're good at doing this already. And this company has all the resources it needs to go buy it elsewhere. The reason this person is hired is can they do it? Can they do it under budget? Wow, that's the worst dollar sign I have ever drew, drew, drawed, drew. I'm having a stroke. The great filter here is can you do it under budget? That's the big thing. And if you go over budget, what happens? Honestly, not a ton of stuff. It's not like it's good, but it's not gonna like kill the project. The project will probably go on even if it's a little bit over budget. Worst case, if it's super over budget, they descope and the requirements are no longer pictures and videos. It's just 10 kilometers, 10 pounds, and they change it from a surveillance drone to one that's just gonna bomb a bunch of innocent civilians. Scenario two, you are the full stack systems engineer for avionics. Draw a little battery here. This is like a nine volt battery, right? What else is an avionics thing? Can I get a telemetry antenna? Okay, this is a Yagi. Everyone tell me you recognize a Yagi antenna. As the systems engineer for the avionics on this UAV, your role is not as specialized as the optics engineer. What you have to do is take these requirements, we're all still working in these requirements, but you have to make sure all these systems, they all need to play nice together. That's what a systems engineer does. This person sees from the top down and makes sure that everyone is friends. I have never done systems engineering in a professional environment, but as I understand it, it's actually a lot of human factors engineering and making sure that people are communicating well. If you're a systems engineer, I would actually really appreciate some feedback on this. Tell me if my understanding is wrong, but I think systems engineering is like a very important role, 
Uh, it's just not often understood exactly what it is. Anyway, just like the optics engineer, you have a great filter. This role isn't quite as specialized as an optics engineer. You're not dealing with the selection of a different sensor or grinding your own glass or really in the weeds on like exactly what communication protocol we need between these two sensors. What you're trying to do is look at system architecture from the top down, and so you're making sure everyone plays nice. And your great filter, although harder to articulate, is the whole system failing because of the interoperation between the dis different systems. I need, a, I need a counter on the number of times I've said systems for this. Air, body, play, nice. This is it, this is your job. In scenario two, as a systems engineer for this project, your job is to make everybody play nice. Let's talk about what happens if you don't pass the great filter. Does the project die? Probably still no. Bo Lockmar is gonna be able to go to some other corporation, some other company, they could buy the IP for someone who has already done a similar product. They could hire a consultant firm that might be able to do this. I get inquiries like this for BPS. People say, can I use Ava for a thing? Do you wanna do consulting? Like that type, of, that type of work. Frankly, if it's Bo Lockmar, Grummel, 3 Harris, they can probably just buy the company that already makes a similar thing and then mod it for their needs. But the great filter here does not mean the project dies. The great filter here does not mean the project dies. So let's talk about scenario three. Folks, we're going with brown on this one. Shout out to the color brown. This sucks, I'm not using this. In scenario three, it doesn't matter where you work. Maybe you still work here and you make a bunch of money or I don't know what people do at defense contractors, but you're still trying to build this. You're still trying to work within these requirements, but it is now a personal project. It's a personal project and this has changed the rules in a bunch of ways. I'm gonna draw another drone because I kind of liked drawing the first one. All right, you're building this. Hopefully it looks better than that. So what's your role in the personal project? I'm asking a leading question, but the role is everything. You are the avionics engineer. You are the optics engineer. You are the propulsion engineer. You are the structures engineer. You're the GNC engineer. You're the flight software engineer. You are the engineer for everything. Everything. If the avionics don't work, it's on you to fix them. If the optics don't work, it's on you to fix them. If any of these things don't work, it's on you to fix them, and it's on you to descope them if they don't work so bad that it's going to kill the project. And this brings up the thing that I have been trying to express for this whole video. Maybe this is more analogy than I actually needed, but I really want to express this clearly because I've tried three times now and I really want to get it right. Your great filter in this scenario is not that it costs too much. It's not that the avionics play nice. It's that the project doesn't happen at all. Don't finish. The rules of the game change in scenario three because it's a personal project and because you have 100% responsibility over all of these things, your great filter is that you don't finish the project. In scenario one, if you don't pass your great filter, it doesn't kill everything. There are things you can do to solve this and the drone can still get built. Bo Lockmark, Grummel 3 Harris can still be happy. In scenario two, you can fail your great filter and there are things you can do to still solve the problem. Your avionics can't play nice and Bo Lockmark, Grummel 3 Harris can be so upset that they go, we're gonna go to Bo Lockmark, Grummel 3 Harris 2 and we're gonna buy them and their avionics. We're gonna put it on there and you're gonna get fired, but the drone is still gonna get made. In scenario three, it's different. The project doesn't finish at all. With a personal project or with a project that is just driven by one person, it is more important, not that it doesn't cost a lot, not that everyone plays nice together, it's more important that you finish the f***ing project. I believe this so deep in my heart, and I actually think it is often to a fault. A lot of the work that I do is not very optimized for cost, it's not very optimized for the avionics being, you know, in communication in the most efficient way or the way that leads to the fewest bugs. Almost every decision that I make for BPS, for the rockets that I build, almost every one of those decisions is optimized for making sure the project crosses the finish line. I love tapping the whiteboard. I get comments like these uh, a bunch on videos where I show some strange engineering decision that is optimized for this. And no hate to these people. I actually get very few mean comments online. I don't get none. I mean, people call me an idiot, but like, 
<laughs> everyone calls everyone an idiot online. But when people say these things like the thermal paste isn't the right way to solve this, what they're optimizing for is scenario one or scenario two, most, most likely scenario one. Using the thermal paste in the quantity that I use it for the camera video that I showed, it's there's linked in the description down below, but the, the amount of thermal paste I use is not the right amount of thermal paste because it's not optimized for like, if you were making a thousand of these things, you'd wanna use thermal epoxy, you'd wanna use a better solution. But what I showed in that video is that I finished the project. I got the result, which met the requirements, I finished the project, and as soon as I could get the thermal paste to work in the quantity that I used it, the project was finished, and I could move on to the next thing. There are so many things in each one of these steps that it's, it's important to just like keep moving forward much more that it's important than it's important to optimize for costs or optimize for you know good systems engineering the hardest thing in any personal project and i'm talking to you because i'm also talking to me is to finish the project the year is ending 2024 is coming to a close 2025 is another great time for new year's resolutions finish your projects Bring them across the finish line. I don't care if they are kicking and screaming and throwing the biggest tantrum ever, get them over the finish line. I didn't really do this the right way. I said the great filter was don't finish, but then these are like the positive results of the great filter. It doesn't matter. I hope I've conveyed the point that I'm trying to make here, which is when you're doing a personal project, you can't quite optimize for the same things. And it's hard to express, especially this thing, because I don't want it to come off as if I don't care that something is expensive. I do. I mean, I'm not going to spend one million bazillion jillion dollars on a thing if I don't have to. It's just that when the cost difference is between like $25 and $10, and I'm gonna to need to order, you know, no more than 10 of those things. If I already have the $25 solution, it's actually a lot more important to me that I keep moving on to the next thing than that I save those $15. I'm making this video as much for myself as I am for everyone else. I need to hear this all of the time. I think I do an okay job of it, but I need a reminder. It's really, really, really hard to finish projects, and it's harder than any of the individual tasks that happen in these. When I'm troubleshooting a CAN bus, I have to remember the CAN bus isn't the thing I'm fighting. The thing I'm fighting is getting to the finish line. And so if I'm troubleshooting a CAN bus for long enough, and I remember I actually don't need a CAN bus, I can circumvent that if I use SPI or I squared C or RS-432 or whatever, I can just ditch that because this isn't the thing I'm fighting. This is not my great filter. My great filter is that I don't finish the project. All right, I hope you enjoyed Joey B rants at the whiteboard for a little while. I found it kind of fun to do and I'm trying to make more stuff on the second channel. I guess it's the third channel, whatever. I'm trying to make more stuff on the shorts channel. I really like talking about these things. I wanted to start a podcast about it at some point and I, I think I'm just, 2025 is the year where I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna start a podcast and then never do it. I am curious to hear in the comments if this is clear, uh, what I'm trying to articulate. I, I do really think it's hard, especially with the cost thing, because I don't want to come off as insensitive to the idea that like projects have to stay within a budget. That is important. It's not that this isn't important. It's that the harder thing is actually just finishing it. Like. I'm gonna be so gentle when I say this, but I know if you're watching this, you have some unfinished projects. I just, I know the type of people who are watching this and I know you've got some stuff that you haven't finished. It's okay, I have it too. We're all here together. We don't, we don't have to feel bad about it, but recognize that this is the thing you're fighting. It's not that it has to be the cheapest thing possible. It's hard to bring things across the finish line. That's the harder thing. I actually think oftentimes we can use this as an excuse to not get the project across the finish line when there may be cheaper options or de-scoping options which let us bypass this altogether to still make sure we defeat this great filter. That is probably enough ranting for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope your holidays are lovely, whatever you celebrate right now. I hope it's happy. Uh, and if you're building a UAV, with these requirements, I hope you remember which one of these scenarios you fit in and what the actual problem is that you're fighting. All right, I will probably see you in 2025. And if I don't,
Well, I'm so excited. I'm going to get to see you sooner. All right. Goodbye.